Hi everyone, this is New Sensei. Today we're taking a look at another bow from Southwest Archery. This time we're taking a look at the ILF takedown recurve, the Southwest Archery Stingray. This has been a fairly popular bow and I've come across a few people who've owned this bow and have said this is one of their favorite bows. Uh, the price is around 500 US dollars, so it's quite pricey. But at this price, you would expect a certain level of quality. So let's find out what the Stingray has to offer. As we said before, the Stingray is a takedown ILF bow, uh, international limb fitting, which means that the limbs are interchangeable with most target style limbs that you find in the market today. So if these limbs don't suit you, then you can find a different set of limbs and easily swap them out. Uh, the combinations of limbs and rods can give you several different lengths. Uh, I believe you can get this in a 15 inch with medium limbs for a 58 inch riser. You can get a 60 inch bow with a 17 inch riser and medium limbs, or you can get a 62 inch bow with a 17 inch riser and med uh, long limbs. So you can choose this from the store. Um, the bow also comes with a string. Uh, should note that the limbs, which are made from uh, fiberglass and maple for the lower draw weights, or carbon and uh, fiberglass for the high draw weights, now, these do have phenolic reinforced tips, so you can use the faster modern string materials. Uh, this particular string is a uh, D97 Dyneema string, so uh, this is a pretty good package. Uh, you don't get the slower, stretchier Dacron, um, so you can squeeze a bit more velocity from this particular setup. The uh, Verizon comes in this very cute little pouch. Um, I actually didn't know what this was when I first got it because uh, a lot of the uh, entry level uh, lower price risers for the field style bows are quite, uh, well they don't come with pouches, so this does come with a pouch. And when you take the uh, riser out, it is actually a really, really nice looking piece of kit. Uh, the motto for Southwest Archery is we don't just make bows, we make art. And uh, I've got several Southwest Archery bows, the uh, Scorpion Longbow, uh, I have the Spider uh, Takedown Recurve, but this is really the next level up. And if you're paying a few hundred more dollars, you would expect a very high quality finish and feel. The riser is actually quite light. Uh, it's not as heavy as an aluminium bow, uh, obviously, but it's also not um, the same uh, balance or weight as even a carbon bow. Uh, this riser is mostly wood. It does have carbon backing and front. So it's a combination of carbon and wood, uh, and the finish is fantastic. You have both the uh, sleek, sport-like black carbon along with the wood finish. So best of both worlds there. And um, I do like the red stripe running down the middle. Uh, that's a bit of a, uh, a hallmark of most bows, and especially Southwest archery bows. But apart from that, it's, uh, it's really delicately soft in the hand. So it's a well-designed uh, riser. I think the for field style, which is meant to be very small, it's about right, what I would expect. As we said earlier, the limb bolts are ILF, which means you can replace the limbs with any uh, target limb or ILF limb. Uh, and of course, you can adjust the uh, poundage by moving the tiller bolts in or out, and also adjust the um, tiller itself by moving the bolts in or out, as well as some uh, horizontal adjustment on the limb pocket. Again, fairly standard with the bows uh, for target risers. You simply unscrew the bolts uh, or the screws on either side of the limb pocket, and you can move the limb pocket left or right if you need to get the center shot. Notable is the lack of any bushings. There is no bushing for um, a plunger or a screw in sight. Uh, there's no bushing for stabilizers. It's completely designed to be a bare bow. But first impressions of the riser in the hand, um, that's a very nice riser. Uh, you, you, like I said, when you uh, choose to spend uh, a few hundred dollars on a bow, you want a good bow and just right away, you feel this is one of those good bows. Definitely a level above the $150 entry level bows that you normally get. Assembling the rest is very straightforward. Um, the pieces are cut out, and in fact, there is a uh, diagram on the package to show you how it looks like, in case you have no idea. 
uh, some of us start like that. Uh, so basically, you uh, make sure you have a clean surface. Um, if it's uh, already been touched by your fingers, you might want to use some uh, wiping alcohol to uh, make sure there's no uh, residual oils. Uh, so you take the backing tape off the uh, fur rest. It's quite a solid piece. Uh, very thick too, but it's a nice uh, bit of adhesion there. And then you place it very carefully over the shelf. You get one shot at this. There we go. That's pretty good. If you're really picky, you could trim the uh, fur rest even more, or the uh, felt rest even more. But uh, it fits the shelf pretty well, I think. So that's the first step there. Perfect size. Very happy with that. Press it closely. Get it in there. This will never come off unless you really peel it off. But uh, no reason why this should come free. Then we have the strike plate. Again, same thing. Remove the backing tape. And likewise, you might want to use some rubbing alcohol to uh, get rid of any residual oil. In this case, I just put it straight on. It's a nice big plate there. There we go. Nice and big. Beautiful. Push it. And that's the strike plate. There we go. Beautiful. And that's the rest set up. Before I forget, I did want to quickly point out that Southwest Archery does sell a pretty convenient carrying case for your bows. Uh, this is especially useful uh, if you're using a takedown bow. I had this in the background with the spider video, uh, but I'll actually go through some of it today. Um, this is, of course, the takedown case. Comes with the Southwest Archery logo. Inside, it's quite a spacious bag, actually. Um, if we finally unzip it, yeah. So inside, quite spacious. We can remove this carrying strap. So you have a pretty decent amount of room. You have one elastic strap in here in case you want to put your riser in here um, and space for other accessories. Uh, there's a, a pouch in here as well, which you might want to store your stabilizers uh, as, as well as limb pouches over here. So it is possible to fit everything in here. In fact, let's actually do so. So we'll slide the riser into uh, its sleeve. It's always nice to do that. Uh, we'll slide the riser in here. That's nice. And the limbs, which you could put into the plexus sleeves or not, up to you. Uh, we can probably put them in this way. So we'll slide them in sideways. Does that actually work? No, it's going to be the other way. So that makes a bit more sense. There we go. Straight in. Perfect. Some, some limb designs will go the other way, but these will stick out. So that's fine. That's pretty normal. Uh, if you have your string or something else, you can put it here. Otherwise, that should be pretty decent. We'll zip it up. And that's actually pretty good. I was worried that the uh, limbs will stick out too much, but uh, this is a pretty typical carrying case. Um, there's an arrow tube here. Uh, this one is from Legend Archery, which uh, I've reviewed a few Legend products, so uh, very nice arrow, uh, quality arrow tube. Um, it's clipped on, if you want to remove it, then just remove the clips, remove the elastic band. Otherwise, you can slide the arrows straight through into the tube here, over here, and that's a pretty convenient case. Um, it's pretty moderately priced, convenient enough, you can carry it by the handles up here or you can attach the carrying strap and carry it over your shoulder. Anyway, back to the bow. Uh, so, as we said before, high earth riser, very easy to assemble. There is an upper and lower limb. All you do is click it in and you are in business. Um, might look a little weird with the short riser, but it's a field style riser and there we go. Perfect fit. In terms of weight, it feels a little heavier than your basic beginner bows, just a little, it's not much. Um, so if you're looking at, for example, the uh, Southwest Spider, I think it's a little lighter in the hand. That's it, this isn't a heavy bow. Um, I wouldn't say this is like the blocky, heavier Samix Age. 
So um, this is a pretty delicate balance between um, something too heavy and something too light. And I mentioned before in the, uh, the riser part that the riser alone feels quite balanced and uh, this is the same case here. Now speaking of balance, do you note that the bow is quite top heavy, <laughs> which is to be expected from a, a bare field bow of this size. So that's not too unusual. Um, just keep in mind when you're shooting that this will uh, tip backwards if you let go and you will have to um, compensate by pulling down uh, when you are drawing. That's again, fairly normal for any uh, trad bare bow. I do really like the glossy finish here. I mean, it's not too shiny. Uh, it's a matte finish, but just the, um, the amount of shine and uh, polish on the riser is just really uh, eye-catching. Uh, very smooth to the hand. Uh, I've mentioned before that um, I'm quite fond of grips which are uh, suitable for average size hands. So this particular grip isn't too aggressive, uh, but it's a great fit for the hand. Um, so if you hold it like this with the fingers over the bow or even slightly off it, um, the thumb and the palm will naturally slide up the, uh, the, the throat of the grip. This is, uh, again, not as aggressive or wide as many other risers, but it is actually quite aesthetically pleasing and it still feels quite good. There's nothing um, in the riser which sticks out and makes your hand feel uncomfortable. And I do really enjoy the feeling that it puts uh, over the, uh, the hand. And I also want to point out that the uh, black and red string that comes with the bow, uh, which suits the uh, Southwest color scheme, is also excellent. Um, overall, the bow uh, is a very nice looking package. And now for the part where I actually shoot the bow. Uh, this will be my very first shot, so I haven't had, uh, mucked around the bow yet. Um, I have high expectations. Like I said, this is about a $500 bow, US, so it's uh, not a cheap bow. But if you're going to spend a bit of premium money on a good bow, I expect a nice feel to it. Uh, this one is 35 pounds. So I normally get 40 or 45 pound bows, but I chose to go low this time because I always get 40 pound bows. Unfortunately, that means that these arrows are not quite spinal for this bow. Uh, I expect these to be a little too stiff. Nonetheless, I should get a fair idea as to how this will fly. So I won't judge the arrow flight too much, but it's mostly the feedback from this bow. So let's give it a shot. Oh, that is nice. Oh, that is nice. Uh, I mean, like, like I said, the arrow isn't perfectly spined, uh, but it flew really nicely. Um, that, surprisingly, um, some good punch in that bow. Uh, did not kick as much as I thought it would. Uh, like I said, 35 pound bow, so it won't have that oomph of a uh, 40 or 45 or 50 pound bow. But uh, oh, that felt pretty satisfying. Hey, I, I see why people like this bow. Let's do some more shooting. Oh, ooh, 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 that is fun. Oh, this is one of those really fun bows. These arrows aren't flying perfectly, but I expected that. But my goodness, this is a fun bow to shoot. Oh, it's nice. I mean, even shooting um, over-spined arrows, um, there's a really nice satisfaction in shooting the bow. Um, the vibration is very well contained. Um, you don't really feel it in your hand, but it, it shoots like a high-performing bow for a trad bow, and that's really, really satisfying.
You know, it's important to choose the right draw weight, and I've chosen 30 pound for a reason. I think uh, well, 30 or 35 pound is the best um, balancing point or midpoint between uh, controlling the bow for a appropriate beginner draw weight and the feeling of good shooting. Um, yeah, uh, just remember too that you can always swap the limbs out. Um, you can buy replacement limbs from Southwest Archery. So if you want to go up in draw weight or down in draw weight with the same riser, you can already do so. And we'll do another set. Um, I want to remind you that I'm using uh, overly spined arrows, like I said earlier, so I'm not going to expect a, a super tight grouping. Uh, but apart from that, apart from that um, bow shoots nice. <laughs> the rest of it just me not having a, a steady aim point. I'm not exactly a trad bebo shooter or very um, experienced one. But once you get the aim point right, this is a very nice bow. It does exactly what you want it to do. Yep, exactly what you want it to do. Exactly what you wanted to do. Whoops, bad shot. Not what I wanted it to do. That's my fault. There's no reason why you can't shoot well with this bow. That's a good feeling. That's a very good feeling. Good finish. You know, this is the kind of bow which you just want to keep on using. Um, yeah, overall thoughts on the sting rate. It's it's worth it. Uh, the the bow is a very very good bow. It feels very nice in the hand. It's a very important part. So the connection between you and the bow is quite strong. Uh, I feel very comfortable using it. it. Doesn't shake in your hand. Doesn't feel too heavy. Doesn't feel like you have to fight it. Um, very well designed uh, riser and bow, of course. Uh, shoots very nicely, uh, and again, I'm using a, a very controllable draw weight. Had a lot of fun shooting it, even with overspined arrows. It shot fairly consistently. Definitely passes the shoot in the general direction test. So uh, it uh, it's very capable. Um, good bow. Uh, how good is good? Um, let's put it this way, okay? I know a lot of people who look into buying bows are looking at budget bows, under 200 US dollars, and that's fair enough. These are the Samic Sages or the Southwest Spiders. These kinds of bows have a certain appeal. So if you want to get into archery, have a decent bow with the lowest uh, price tag, then bows like the Southwest Spider are designed for you. And they still shoot very well, uh, but there are, of course, much cheaper materials. And the feeling, while good, isn't great. What makes the Stingray riser and limbs stand out uh, and justifying that price point is that extra level of smoothness. Um, uh, comparing, you know, again, a cheap entry-level bow to a, a fairly heavy price, high price bow, uh, the difference is in the feeling. The smoothness of the draw and the smoothness of the shot, it's really reflected in a bow like the Stingray. Uh, that's why I, I would be justified spending $500 on a bow like this. It incorporates more elements of high-end, high-performance bows, um, and the design incorporates a lot of um, you know, simple engineering, but well-made, well-polished and overall a very good feeling. Um, would there be bows better than this? And the answer is probably yes, uh, but those bows would probably double the price tag. I mean, uh, I've shot bows like the Bear Takedown, and that's a luxury bow, like $1,000. Extremely good uh, materials, very good manufacturing, but this is the midpoint. And I feel that 
this is the kind of bow where you would buy it if you want to buy a, like a, a luxury bow but not spend like a thousand dollars on a luxury bow so this is like middle luxury you're still better than the plebs below you shooting hundred dollar bows but you're not like busting your bank account to buy really high or rare collector's bows. So yeah, I think this is my, uh, my overall assessment. That would be the Stingray is a luxury bow for a mid-range price tag. Uh, if you only buy one bow, which you would like to have both as a fun recreational bow or serious bow, or even um, you know, a status symbol because it just looks and feels nice, then the Stingray is probably one of those bows uh, in your market. Um, I think the bow itself, uh, as it comes in the package, is very well put together. Um, again, smooth shot, nice vibration control. Um, I, think, I think the only thing you really need to add is uh, some string silencers, and uh, the bow is going to be very, very nice. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. This is New Sensei, and I will see you next time.